Let's see if we can get some rabbit dinner. Winner, winner, rabbit dinner. What a great bow, so easy to build. Every week I'm approached by different companies through my YouTube channel wanting me to try out their products. And up until this point, I've turned most of the offers down. But recently, a company named Snowjo offered me some really cool products that I wanted to test out. They gave me a solar generator, which allows me to recharge my batteries when I'm doing YouTube projects out in the wilderness. Uh, just set out the solar panels and I can recharge my laptop and all of my devices. And they have some really cool tools for bushcraft. These are Japanese garden tools, but they have great applications for a variety of things out in the survival situation. So I picked a couple of their tools and wanted to try them out. And this is one of them. This is the Nakisaku Takanada Hatchet. It doesn't really look like a hatchet. It looks more like a machete, but they call it a hatchet. And what I like so much about it is compact. It fits in a pack, it's lightweight, and it can do a variety of projects. I don't want to just be an infomercial for uh, products. I want to actually test these out. So in this video, we're going to make a bow using just this hatchet as the only tool. Let's go into the forest and test out this hatchet. When making a primitive survival bow, the kind I'm talking about here, that's a simple round stick that you do minimal shaping just to get it to bend evenly. You need to select the right kind of wood that can withstand the tension and compression forces on this and still have strength enough to shoot an arrow. Living in the Pacific Northwest, I've experimented with a lot of different kinds of woods and by far my favorite is this plant. It's the ocean spray. It's not really a tree, it's a tall shrub that puts on these long shoots and this is the best plant by far for uh, making primitive archery equipment. Uh, living in the Pacific Northwest, we don't have river cane or some of the other uh, material that people make primitive arrows out of. By the second year, this will harden up and make an awesome primitive arrow shaft. All my hunting arrows that I use are made out of ocean spray that's been seasoned, and you don't have to straighten it that much. These are incredibly effective. They have a thicker end on the base, and we put our knockdown here on the thinner end so they're naturally tapered. They fly really well, and I shot these into rocks and trees and never broken a shaft because it doesn't have grain. It has a circle grain with a small pith on the inside, and it's perfect for making arrows. But these shoots are also great for making bows when they get bigger. This one here will even make about a 15 to 20 pound bow, perfect for uh, hunting rabbits. And this one here is really thick, it's about 3 inches in diameter. And that will be a bow that's heavy enough to kill an elk or deer. It's a really hard shooting, powerful bow. So we're going to carve this uh, stick here, we're going to cut it down with our hatchet and uh, shape it into a bow. And I might take a few smaller ones so we can shape those two and see how those shoot. But the first step is to uh, cut it right here and then where it splits right up there. That will give us about a five foot uh, stave to work with. So it's going to be a shorter bow, but it's going to be incredibly powerful. So let's see how our Japanese stainless steel hatchet works on this incredibly hard wood. This is going to make an awesome bow. This stave is perfect and it's a good diameter without any knots or any branching. It's going to make a heavy bow. I can't wait to shape it. One of the nice things about making these bows and arrows out of ocean spray is it doesn't kill the plant. Every time you cut it, it will send out new shoots, which will be great arrows in one or two years. And I prune these ocean spray bushes on purpose just to get more arrows. So it's a perfect plant for all your primitive archery needs. I'm ready to start shaping our stave, which is the stick we cut into our survival bow. I'm calling this a survival bow because it's not seasoned wood. We're not going to get it perfectly tillered. We're going to quickly get a bow that we can shoot arrows and uh, hunt rabbits and small game with. This is going to be a really nice bow even though it's not a perfect bow that I'd make in my shop and spend months doing. We're going to see how quickly we can make a bow that is functional out of green wood. Now uh, the basic parts of a bow are we have the back which is the um, side of the bow facing away from you and the belly which is the side facing you as you pull the bow back. The back of the bow is going to be bending and the belly is going to be uh, compressing. So because the back is bending, we don't want that to break. I'm not going to touch the bark at all on the back of the bow. I'm only going to be removing uh, from the belly of the bow so until these limbs are thin enough that they bend and we want them bending evenly. I'm not going to remove that much material from the center of the bowl where my handle is, but I'm going to be progressively thinning it and tapering it so it's going to be much thinner on the tips. and. Uh, much thicker in the middle. That's how simple it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Japanese stainless steel hatchet and uh, just start chopping the wood, removing it. Uh, so find roughly about the middle and then 
start taking material off the belly. I'm just going to keep removing material along both limbs until it starts to bend and then I'll show you what that looks like. But this hatchet is working through this wood really quickly. This bow's taking shape. It's only been a couple of minutes and we've already removed a lot of material. So let's keep working at this to get this shooting bow. It's been about 20 minutes and as you can see both limbs of the bow are starting to take shape. I still have full thickness here at the handle and as we uh, move out to the tips of the bow it starts to taper. The exciting part about this is this is about the point when uh, you can start to bend the limbs and uh, this must be way over 100 pound pull right now. Can't even hardly bend it but I'm going to have to continue removing especially here on the tips. The farther you are from the handle the more material you remove and you want to have it equally on both sides so that they bend uh, together and work together and one's not working hard at the other. That's when bows break. Pretty soon we're going to uh, switch from removing large chunks of wood with the hatchet to turning this into a draw knife and pulling smaller, finer wood. We're going to fine tune this and uh, get the limbs bending evenly. You can see how rough this belly of this bow is uh, using this as a hatchet and taking out big gouges. Using it as a draw knife will smooth all that out. You just start to work it down, taking fine shavings. And in no time at all, it's nice and smooth. We'll continue this, tapering it down towards the tips. You just get these big gouges here and you just kind of slowly work them until the whole limb is smooth. It's a smooth transition. That's so much smoother. I can really feel the limb start to bend as I apply pressure with my hip. And uh, it's going to be a nice flat bow, very powerful bow. And man, this knife is making a quick work of this stave. I love these nice thin shavings that just peel off like that. I've been doing quite a bit of shaping on our bow and I thought I'd show you where we're at. Here on the back of the bow at the handle I still have that continuous layer of bark that keeps the bow structurally sound when you pull it back. But I've tapered the sides here to fit the hand at the handle. You can see the hand fits nicely and the arrow actually sits right on my hand as an arrow shelf. You'll notice some lateral cracks. I'm not too concerned about these. I still think this bow is structurally sound. Those come when your uh, bow stave is green and it seasons too quickly and cracks. But I'm not worried about these at all. I think it will still shoot well. Now you see the bow tapers this way but also flattens out. It has a, a half circle round uh, profile to it on the back of the bow but it's nice and flat here. And as you move down the bow, You'll see right towards the tips I do something a little different. This is a very ancient style of bow that's been found in Europe where you have flat limbs and then towards the tips you actually uh, increase your thickness here but you, they become more narrow. And I really like how this style of bow shoots. I've also inserted some knocks to fit our bowstring. Here's what the bow that we've been working on looks like now that I have a string on it. Now one of the steps you're going to have to learn in making bows is a step called tillering. And what that is, is removing material on the belly of each limb so that they bend evenly and are working together. But that can be a little frustrating for some people learning how to make a bow uh, to get it exactly bending perfectly. And I don't want them to get discouraged. So what I'm going to show you is a bow that's not perfectly tillered but still shoots well. So this bow, if you pull it back, bends a little more on one limb than the other. And you'd think that that might be a big problem, but it still shoots well. So I'm going to go show you this bow in action and uh, I'm going to let this actually season and then finish tillering after it's all dry. But for now, let's go practice shooting it. I've completed our unseasoned ocean spray survival bow. Also made a primitive arrow here out of an ocean spray shaft and I'm ready to test this bow out. In a survival situation, it's great to have one tool where you can chop down a tree, uh, rough carve it into a bow stave and then fine tune it as a draw knife into a finished bow. This bow could be great for getting food such as uh, rabbits and squirrels. I have a red coffee can down there which will simulate a rabbit in a survival situation. Let's see if we can get some rabbit dinner. Winner, winner, rabbit dinner. What a great bow, so easy to build and uh, shoots good. I'm really happy with this bow and with the hatchet. Along with being a great woodworking tool, this hatchet is very versatile. So if you're out in a survival situation and you catch a fish, you can use your hatchet to actually gut the fish and clean it and prepare it. I'm going to smoke this fish, so I'm going to take off the fillets and then make some soup out of the head and the spine. But uh, yeah, this works great and uh, you don't need to have a knife and a hatchet. You can just have a hatchet there. Just kind of take that apart. 
That will be great for a soup. And then you can just cut right open that fish. There's all the innards that can be used for bait for a trap. I'm really impressed with how this hatchet worked. That six and a half inch blade was just perfect for making a bow. So if you want to buy this hatchet or check it out, uh, I'll put the link in the description below for Snow Joe's website. They're the exclusive dealer of these products in the US. And uh, I'm really happy with it. I wish the tang extended a little more through the handle. So you do have to be a little careful when uh, chopping that you don't break the handle. But overall, the blade is very sharp, held an edge, works great for a draw knife, a knife, and a hatchet. So overall, a really good product to consider.